Well, welcome to a four-part series on how sin works. What I want to try to do in this short series is debunk some of the myths we believe about why we sin and where sin comes from. So uh, up here on the board, you'll see that I have five squares, and this is going to represent the development of where sin comes from in your heart. And so we're going to end here with the final product, with sin. And we're going to work our way backwards and try to figure out where it comes from. When I was growing up, um, I always thought sin came from temptation. I would be, you know, minding my own business, walking down the street, and a beautiful girl would pass by me, and it was my job then and there to fight the temptation to look at her lustily, right? That was my job. Um, I had no idea I needed to be in a fight with sin until the temptation presented itself to me. And so, most of us think that this is how sin works. We, most of us think this is how it goes. We think that temptation comes right before sin. Temptation. And this is what we think it happens. We think that we're just living our lives, and then the enemy all of a sudden springs on us and brings to us something to tempt us with. And it's our job then and there to fight that temptation. And if we successfully fight the temptation, then we will not go to the final step of sin. And that's how we think sin works. But what we need to realize is that this is a myth. This is not how sin works in you. This is not why you sin. Because why you sin and where sin comes from starts earlier, lives deeper, and fights harder than most of us ever imagine. And, and, and the enemy really wants to get our eyes off the true battlefield. He wants us to be focused on temptation. He doesn't want us to be thinking deeper about where sin actually comes from. But I'd like us to look at this verse in Proverbs 4.23 and see that there is a deeper part of us that actually controls what we choose to do and not to do. And that part of us is our hearts. Listen to this, Proverbs 4.23. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. So what we have to ask is, why do we do what we do? We do what we do, whether that's sin or something holy, because our hearts want it. And the rest of the Bible corroborates this position. Uh, look at James chapter 1, verse uh, 14 and 15. Each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. And so what James is telling us here is that something comes before temptation. There's a box right here before temptation. Something lies underneath it. So that means temptation is not the primary problem. There's a deeper issue at stake, and James tells us that it is desire. Now, this should actually be pretty easy for us to come to terms with. I want you to think about it. You can't be tempted to do something you don't want to do. So, for instance, um, I can't come to you with a bowl of, like, crumbled up concrete and tempt you to eat it, right? Because you don't want to eat concrete. You don't desire concrete as a source of food. So for me to come to you and say, mmm, concrete, doesn't it look tasty? You know you want it. Uh, th th there, there's, there's no way that that's an actual legitimate temptation because you don't actually have the desire for it. The only way that desire leads to temptation, which leads to sin, is if you actually desire something first. And so what we have to come to terms with is the fact that we sin because we desire sin. We desire it. We want it. We love sin. And we hate Jesus. That's why we choose sin over Jesus time and time again. So what we have to do is not necessarily go, what are the best ways to fight temptation? How can I avoid temptation in my life? What are some guardrails I can put up to keep myself out of tempting situations? Instead, what we need to do is go one step deeper and actually ask, how can I change my desires? How can I change what I actually want, what I love and what I hate? How can I change my heart? And the way we change our heart 
is not by saying no to temptation or, or trying to put ourselves in a way that buffers us from those tempting environments. The way we change our hearts is changing our desires. And the only way to change our desire is to desire something more than sin. And this is what the gospel does. Jesus comes to us and he offers us something better. He gives us a more grand desire, and that is himself. The reason why we sin is because we desire sin more than Jesus. And so if you want to fight temptation, if you want to not sin, the way you do this is reveling in the truth of the gospel, understanding that Jesus is far more satisfying, will meet every single one of your desires far better than sin ever could. The way you fight sin is not by saying no to temptation. It is by satisfying your desires in Jesus. Hey, my name is David Bowden with Spoken Gospel. It's the vision of Spoken Gospel to speak the gospel out of every corner of scripture. And we try to do that through teaching videos like these. This one was about my book, Rewire Your Heart. If you want more information about it, we invite you to click right here. If you want to watch the rest of these sessions, we invite you to watch the next video by clicking here. We invite you also to please come and support our ministry in trying to preach the gospel to people around the world by visiting down here. And please remember to subscribe.